Welcome back YouTubers, this is Omar from Near Mint Condition. Today I'm going to do a comprehensive reading order of the amazing Spider-Man in omnibus and oversized hardcovers. Now this is part one of two parts, I'm mainly focusing on the Omnis. Part two will deal with the oversized hardcovers. And this is just focusing on Amazing Spider-Man, not Adjectiveless Spider-Man, not Ultimate Spider-Man or the Ven Omnibus or Deadly Foes of Spider-Man Omnibus, just Amazing Spider-Man Omnis and oversized hardcovers. So, stay tuned. Again, I just wanna remind everybody, this is just a list for Amazing Spider-Man. So no Ultimate Spider-Man, no Ven Omnibus, no Untold Tales of Spider-Man or, um, or Tangled Web or Deadly Foes of Spider-Man, things like that. Or the Carnage Omnibus. I wanted to make this list because much like my X-Men stuff, this kind of stuff gets confusing. And it's a question that I get asked quite often. Where people should start reading Spider-Man or how these omnibuses fit and where. So, I hope I'm able to answer these questions for you. And the reason I wanted to split it up into two parts is because I know with my X-Men stuff, I went on and on and on. So I didn't want to make this into an hour-long video. I kind of wanted to make it shorter. So I hope it's okay that I split it up into two parts. Let's get started. And I do want to say that I am currently working on my comprehensive list of uncanny x-men and oversized hardcovers and omnibuses part two so that list is coming out soon i promise but for now let's focus on this amazing spider-man by the way each one of these omnibuses is first printing so some of the second printings and third printings are a lot slimmer for example this is the first printing of volume one and this goes back to my days of when i first got into omnis this was my second or third omnibus i bought and the second printing I've heard is a lot thicker than this. And then the third printing is of course thinner because of the paper they use and the kind of binding that they use. So keep that in mind. Also keep in mind that some of these are out of print, unfortunately, because Marvel lets these things go out of print. I have no idea why. I know that Amazing Spider-Man's Omnibuses Volume 1, 2, and 3 are out of print. So there is that. So what this collects is the very beginning very very beginning of the story of spider-man and that of course kicks off in amazing fantasy number 15 with his origin then it also collects amazing spider-man 1 through 38 annual 1 through 2 strange tales annual number 2 and the fantastic four annual number one which of course features spider-man i mean this is a pretty big book this has over 40 issues worth of stuff a lot of first appearances not just spider-man but some of his best arch nemesis like the green goblin craven the hunter the vulture first appearance of daredevil things like that and all of this was drawn by steve ditko by the way well at least all the issues of amazing spider-man that is and some of my favorite spider-man stories come from this too this goes back to the original stan lee and steve ditko team up let's see if i can find one of my favorite issues here issue 33 i believe is the one that i'm looking for I love the fact that they collect all the letter pages and all the covers in this. This is such a great collection. This is the way that I like to collect these things. And here is my favorite issue right here. So here we go. Spider-Man, the final chapter. Oh, one of the best stories ever written. I love this. So here we have this moment that was kind of captured in the new Spider-Man Homecoming a little bit. Ah, oh, yes. What a phenomenal story for back then. This is so great. Now, if you're not into the Silver Age type of storytelling, this might not be for you. But if you want to see where everything began, then these are the volumes that you need to get. So this is where it kicks off. And it, like I said, it stops at issue 38. By the way, this cover is drawn by Alex Ross. The normal Amazing Fantasy number 15 is drawn by Jack Kirby, that cover. Uh, for some reason, they did not use Steve Ditko's cover. And I think they collect Steve Ditko's unused cover here, which later they used in the Superior Spider-Man for a cover there. Let's see. I think they have it back here. Here is the unused cover of Amazing Fantasy 15 by Steve Ditko. Oh, and I love this stuff too. The, stu the fact that they reprint a lot of the Marvel Tales. And moving on to volume number two, like I said with my Uncanny X-Men, I always get the variant covers because I know that I'll get the original covers inside of the books. And I know a lot of people hate this cover, this Umberto Ramos cover based on the John Romita stuff. Speaking of John Romita, this book is full of John Romita goodness. This is where he kind of kicks off. 
So this collects Amazing Spider-Man 39 through 67, Annual 3 through 5, and Spectacular Spider-Man, mainly issues 1 through 2. Oh, damn it, this is such a great story. This is kind of where Spider-Man tries to join the Avengers and he kind of fails, so I thought that was really cool. This collection has a lot of great stuff in here, from the revelation of the Green Goblin's secret identity to the unforgettable first appearance of Mary Jane Watson. It also includes the first appearance of the Rhino and, of course, the Kingpin, who later on everybody thinks is the nemesis of Daredevil. Ah, here we go. Issue number 50. One of the best comic books ever written. Spider-Man No More. Such a great story. Such an iconic issue that they went ahead and used it for part of the plot of Sam Raimi's Spider-Man number two. More of the Stan Lee storytelling style where I think the artist just drew a lot of the stuff and kind of left him to do the dialogue. Kind of like in the way that Steve Ditko did stuff. But John Romita, my God. I, I, I know this is going to sound blasphemous, but I enjoy his art. Probably a little more than I did Steve Ditko. Not that Steve Ditko was a bad artist, but I just really, really like the hyper-realism that John Romita brought into this book. It's really good. Um, by the way, these some of these are collected in epic collections and in trade paperbacks. So you don't have to, if you want to try these books out, you don't have to get these $100 books. It's just the way that I prefer to collect them. And uh, this is the one from, I think, Spectacular Spider-Man, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Spectacular Spider-Man. This is just the way I prefer to collect my comic books in these big oversized hardcovers. Because they are they look really nice on a bookshelf. But trade paperbacks are widely available, a lot cheaper, and a lot easier to read, honestly. This is the first sketch of Mary Jane Watson. My god, she still looks the same, still hot. And... Oh, this is really cool. Yeah, this, this is why I love these editions. They just collect so much of all these little extras here. John Romita just joined here with Don Heck and Larry Lieber and Jim Mooney. As far as some of the illustrations, it's not just him. Ah, it's so awesome. They include all the covers to the Marvel Masterworks stuff. Now, Volume 3 has only had one printing. And Volume 2 has had two printings and Volume 1 has had three printings. But rest assured, I'm sure when Spider-Man Far From Home comes out, they will reprint, if not all of these, at least Volumes 1 and 2. So this is Amazing Spider-Man Volume 3. This collects Amazing Spider-Man 68 through 104. And that's it. There's no annuals. There's no other one-shots. There's no Avengers or Fantastic Four. It is just straight up Amazing Spider-Man. With more of that Stan Lee and John Romita goodness. And this one collects some of my favorite stories, like the Stone Tablet Saga, and it introduces us to the Black Widow's new look. It has a lot of the drama in the Kingpin's life, and a death of a main character that leads into another big dramatic change in Spider-Man's life. And we have this awesome, like, soap opera drama between Spider-Man, Peter Parker, and Gwen Stacy. Love triangle going on. And then, of course, the classic drug issues of Spider-Man 96 through 98, the ones that kind of defied those comics code. Spider-Man confronts Harry Osborn, his roommate at the time, about popping pills. And Harry was like, oh, it's because Mary Jane broke up with me. I'm kind of heartbroken. So he has to deal with that. And it's a pretty cool story, way ahead of its time. And I think that was issues 96 through 98 when he was dealing with that. And he defeats Norman Osborn by showing him his sick son. And I thought that was a really cool, way ahead of its time story. This also includes the first appearance of Morbius in issues 101. There we go. Soon to be another movie just like Venom. Right. Thanks, Sony. Lots more of the same good stuff. And that is it for 
Volume 3. Now, we just found out that Marvel announced a Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 4, which collects issues 105 to 142, Marvel Super Heroes Giant Size 1, and Marvel Super Heroes 14. And it's got two covers, one by Frank Cho and one by John Romita. Cannot wait for that. Okay, moving on to probably one of my favorite runs on Spider-Man by Roger Stern. This is Spider-Man. See why it gets kind of confusing? Because this is just called Spider-Man. Roger Stern Omnibus. But it fits right in there between Amazing Spider-Man Volume 3 and, I'll talk about this, but there is an oversized hardcover that goes there. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But it fits right here between these two Omnis. Kind of weird, but whatever. So this is a huge cult classic or a huge classic in the world of comic books. We, who have been reading Spider-Man for a long time, love this run. Roger Stern did an amazing, amazing run on Spider-Man. So this collects... Spectacular Spider-Man 46 through 61 and 85. And then Amazing Spider-Man 206. And then it jumps over to 224 to 252. And then the annual 16 through 17. Plus it has some material from annual number 15. And it has the Spectacular Spider-Man annual number 3. And Web of Spider-Man annual number 3. And a What If number 34. All written by Roger Stern. So this is one of those writer-centric books. I'm sure if you been reading comic books or have been on the internet a lot, you know that his run is probably known for the kid that collected Spider-Man. I'm not gonna ruin that story for you, but it is a tearjerker and it is a beautiful story and part of the Juggernaut story too. But I myself am a fan of the Hobgoblin. I thought that was a, such a unique character to introduce to Spider-Man. Yes, yes, total ripoff of the Green Goblin, I know. But I love the way that he was introduced. I love the mystery of who he was. And honestly, a lot of that stuff doesn't even get resolved until much later. So I hope one day they end up collecting that kind of run with the Hobgoblin Live storyline. But until then, this will have to do. This is a wonderful story. And I think this one's here still in print. If I'm to recommend one of these Omnis from here, this is the one that I highly recommend. It's one of my favorite runs of Spider-Man. All right. So really quick, I oh, love that cover. A lot of this stuff here is drawn by John Romita Jr., by the way, the son of John Romita, who used to draw the classic Spider-Man stuff with Stan Lee. And during his run, his art style kind of changes. Yes, this is the story I was talking about. I freaking love this story. The kid who collects Spider-Man, big tearjerker. Love that story. So many iconic covers on this whole run. Um, okay, so let's talk about this really quick. There is an oversized hardcover that I did not pick up. Why? Because I already own the epic collection of it. And that is Craven's Last Hunt. I know, spoiler, but it's in the damn title. And it goes between these two books right here. But that only collects Amazing Spider-Man 293 and 294. So I figure for two issues, I'm not gonna upgrade my epic. I'll just wait until a proper omnibus collection comes out and I'll buy that, if that ever happens. So who knows with Marvel. What I will talk about, though, is this next omnibus, which is another one of my favorite runs. This is The Amazing Spider-Man by David Michelini and Todd McFarlane. Like I said, I got the first printings of these books, so this is the variant copy that came out because this is the cover to issue 300. Issue 301 was the standard edition. Now, luckily, this book has been reprinted recently. You should go out and get it because this introduces us to the character of Venom. Now, there is a Spider-Man versus Venom, which I'll talk about later, but this here is the introduction of Tom McFarlane's Spider-Man. And this collects Amazing Spider-Man 296 through 329, and then some material from Spectacular Spider-Man annual number 10. And that's it. That is pretty much Tom McFarlane's run. But it also has art by Eric Larson. It's just not Tom McFarlane. So, Thank God, because I remember in the trade paperbacks, they left out the issue of the assassination plot that Eric Larson drew. And I always thought that was kind of stupid. Now, some of this stuff has been collected in Inferno trade paperbacks, also the Cosmic Saga epic collection with Spider-Man. But this is the way that I like to own them, in oversized hardcover. This is beautiful. I'm a huge fan of Tom McFarlane's art. Not so much as storytelling. After this, he left the book to go and do his own Spider-Man, adjectiveless Spider-Man. And that book was okay, but huge fan of his art. There is an omnibus available of that, but I'm not gonna talk about that because I'm focusing on amazing Spider-Man stuff. This is the issue I was talking about with Eric Larson on art. They actually left out this issue because it wasn't drawn by Todd McFarlane in the trade paperbacks. That is ridiculous. And here we go. That ends his run. Yeah, they include the Marvel Tales covers that he did. God, McFarlane. If only you could come back and draw Spider-Man a couple more issues, that would be great. I always like this pin up here. 
Half of it is drawn by Eric Larson, and half of it is drawn by Tom McFarlane. So after leaving Amazing Spider-Man, he went on to do his adjective with Spider-Man, leaving Eric Larson to come and take over his run. Now, this is the David Michelini Eric Larson omnibus. This does collect other stuff other than Amazing Spider-Man, which I will mention because it's part of this omnibus. So this collects Amazing Spider-Man 287, and then 324, 327, skipping around, even though that was collected before in the other omnibus that I just talked about. But it does collect a big chunk of stuff that wasn't previously collected, and that is issues 329 to 350. Like The Return of Venom, The Return of the Sinister Six, and then The Revenge of the Sinister Six, which is one of my all-time favorite amazing Spider-Man stories. Or, I'm sorry, Spider-Man stories, because that story takes place in Adjectiveless. So yes, this also collects Adjectiveless Spider-Man, issue 15, 18 through 23. Amazing Spider-Man Volume 2, 19 to 21, which is the Howard Mackey stuff after he came back and they revamped the numbering. I think either Howard Mackey or John Byrne wrote that story. I can't remember. Love that issue where he traps Venom on the island. And then the next time you see Venom is when Carnage comes into play. And then material from Marvel Comics Presents 48 through 50. And that is all... That's all. Yeah, Revenge of the Sinister Six. This story is so badass. 90s. I don't care what anybody says. Look how ridiculous it is. Oh, yeah. It's so much fun. Tongue in cheek. You can't take it too seriously. Here we go. This is the Amazing Spider-Man story I was talking about. So it was written by Howard Mackey. I was right the first time. Yeah, this is from Volume 2. None of this stuff has ever been collected in oversized hardcover. Uh, not until JMS, J. Michael Straczynski, took over the book. So it's nice that it's in here, just kind of weird, because there's like a 15-year gap in between those stories. And some extra stuff here in the back, trading cards and covers. Moving on. Now, I did do an overview of this book, so I'm not going to talk much about it. If you want to look at that overview, click on that card up here, please, to watch the episode if you're interested to see exactly what this book contains. Right now, I'll just mention the fact that it contains Amazing Spider-Man 258. 300 it pretty much is all venom centric 315 through 317 332 to 333 342 to 347 now all that was previously collected in omnis beforehand now we get some new stuff like the carnage saga 361 to 363 issues 374 and part of 375 378 through 380 and that is it for amazing spider-man the rest of the stuff is just carnage and venom centric like maximum carnage Never before collected an oversized hardcover. I never thought I would be holding this in my hand because I never thought Marvel would make an omnibus, let alone two omnis, of the Clone Saga. But this is the Clone Saga. And I swore up and down I would not buy it because I already own the trade paperbacks. But if you ever watch my hauls, I found this at a yard sale. No, it wasn't a yard sale. I'm sorry. It was a flea market for like $30, $25. So damn it. I went ahead and bought it. So this contains Web of Spider-Man 117 through 125, Amazing Spider-Man, which is the main reason why I'm talking about it here, 394 to 401, and Spider-Man Adjective List 51 through 58, Spectacular Spider-Man 217 through 224, and Spider-Man Unlimited 7 through 9. And honestly, the Clone Saga didn't start off that bad. I was kind of digging it. I reread these probably a couple months ago. Actually, I enjoyed Volume 1 quite a lot. You can tell when the story started padding... Like, they were really, really pushing for, okay, we got to keep this story going because it's selling. I think originally they were just going to do a six-issue limited series. As a matter of fact, I think they just released uh, a couple of years ago the real Clone Saga or the Untold Tales of Clone Saga or something like that in a hardcover, in a trade paperback. Like, the original idea of what it was supposed to be before all the editors and writers went crazy and overboard with the story. I mean, this was a huge huge story at the time it was coming out but what surprises me is it is also known as one of the worst stories of spider-man so it surprises me that they decided to release it in omnibus format for that matter they lost a lot of readers and a lot of sales due to these stories it introduces us to ben riley the clone of spider-man maybe maybe not or maybe peter parker was the clone all along so many questions and so many answers but you've got to push yourself through thousands of pages before you finally Get the revelation of who's really who. And this is all in volume one. Some pretty good artwork here from like Mark Bagley, Sal Buscema, Klaus Jansen, 
So, I mean, there's some salient points here. Uh, honestly, the fight with Venom was pretty good, and the fight with Carnage in Volume 2 is pretty solid. And some articles. And let's look at Volume 2. Of all the covers they could have gone, I don't know why they went with those two covers for Volume 1 and Volume 2. I'm not a fan of those. I do like that they kept going with this, though, putting all the covers in the back. So this wraps up the Clone Saga. Sort of, because I'll get to that here in a little bit. This contains Amazing Spider-Man 402 to 406. The super special of Amazing Spider-Man, because all these have a super special. Spider-Man 59 through 63 with the super special. Spectacular Spider-Man 225 to 329 with the super special. Web of Spider-Man 126 to 129 with, you guessed it, the super special. The Venom super special. New Warriors, hell yeah, New Warriors 61 through 66, that's when Ben Riley joined the New Warriors. Spider-Man the Jackal Files, Spider-Man Maximum Clonage, oh boy, <laughs> Alpha and Omega, I think by that point most people were gone from the book. Spider-Man Unlimited number 10, Spider-Man Team Up 1, Spider-Man the Lost Years 1 through 3, which shows us exactly what happened to Kane, or where he was during that time, and Spider-Man the Parker Years. And that wraps up this story. Some pretty good artwork here, again. Patrick Searcher, Mark Bagley, a couple of the guys that kind of drew like McFarlane or tried to draw like McFarlane, but kind of failed. But I think the art isn't as good as in Volume 1. I cannot believe these sold well enough, because guess what? Marvel recently announced that there is a Ben Riley omnibus, because at the end of this, Peter Parker decides to quit being Spider-Man and gives Ben Riley his blessings to become the new Spider-Man. So, coming January of 2019, we're getting a Ben Riley Omnibus Volume 1. And if that sells well enough, we'll get a Volume 2. I mean, I'm happy. That's cool that if people really like the Clone Saga, they can finish it off. I think that one should be two volumes because there's C... Um, I want to say there's six trade paperbacks of that. As a matter of fact, there are. I'm looking at them right now. But, you know, there's just so many other stories they could have gone with instead of that. But... You know what? I am not part of Marvel's collective department. They get to decide what to print and what not to print. These are just my two cents. But, yep, that's it. That is it. That is everything in oversized hardcover and omnibus format in the 90s. So then, part two of this, I will talk more about the stuff that came afterwards. The aughts, the 2000s, all the way to current year. What's available in oversized hardcover and what's coming in the omnibus format. So, that's it. And that was it for part one. Tune into this channel for part two, where I talk about the oversized hardcovers and what came after the 90s. And don't forget that we are getting that Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 4, which will go right between Amazing Spider-Man 3 and Spider-Man by Roger Stern. And don't forget the Spider-Man Ben Riley Saga Omnibus that comes out in January of 2019. There is another Omnibus solicited, but I'm not going to talk about that one until part two, where I'll talk about Spider-Man post-90s stories so tune in for that episode thank you again for watching this was omar don't forget to subscribe if you like the video and don't forget to hit that like button have a great day